everyone, it's Jama Malney. Welcome to part two of my Killa Kit series using this adorable Sweet Safari scrapbooking kit. I already did that layout one, which turned out really cute. I will link that at the end of this video and in the description down below. Now for layout two, it called for five photos, but I was able to fit seven. So you'll see me um, rearrange some things and rework the layout to work for two extra photos. And I also trimmed up the base page to get extra paper out of it to use on future layouts. Now I'm punching out all of the die cut pieces. This part's really cool. It's got the letters that you punch out and then you see the background through it. But as I was looking at this paper and the guide, I thought, wow, that's a lot of that really cool paper getting covered up. So you can see this paper here on the guide. It has you cut the left-hand large polka dot into half inch strips. So you get five half inch strips. And then on the right side, you cut off the whole piece of the large polka dot paper. So I thought I was gonna be smarter than the guide here, and I wasn't. Um, and I cut my half inch strips, and then I left half of an inch on. And I was thinking, oh, well, that's gonna just be what pokes out. But it doesn't work out that way because the piece that goes over it goes wider than that black and multicolored paper. So don't do that. I end up cutting it off in a little bit. But here I'm trying to leave half of an inch showing. And so I've got my three half inch strips and one that's a little bit skinnier. And then on this side, I'm cutting off that larger piece and leaving half an inch as well. So I'm gonna set all those aside. Some of them are getting used on this layout. You can see that the half inch strips go down the side and then um, these red with small polka dot pages you were supposed to use these as the base page, but I thought that's a lot of really cute paper that's getting covered up. So again, this actually worked. I cut them into three inch strips and then I had one of the large papers left over for future layouts that will be in this series. So this is where I realized, well, I just need to cut off the whole large polka dot paper because it's getting covered up and then I will glue them on separately. So here we've got that kind of multicolored and black paper underneath, and then you're supposed to use that red polka dot paper as the base page. But instead, I used a black page as the base, and then I put those three inch strips down on the sides, and I used my Versamat loosely because I didn't tape it down, but I used my Versamat to kind of line everything up and know where I was placing it because some of these, the directions tell you to place it a certain number of inches in. And then I wanted to line up these, in, these words so that it covers just what it needs to of this cool multicolored paper. So I lined that up and I marked on my trimmer where I need to cut it. And there we go. And then all I need is that little strip and I have the whole rest of it left over for future layouts. So I'm gonna dab it with a little bit of liquid glue in all of the little nooks and crannies because I don't want any of that to be lifting up. And then once I get the liquid glue in all the nooks and crannies, I'll go in with um, this little strip and then I'll use my tape runner for the rest of it and that will be fine. So then I'll just put it on the black base page because then that way the black letters that were supposed to show through are still black and then I just have that away in the multicolor and it looks just like it was supposed to. And then down the sides, I just had those three inch pieces instead of the whole piece and then this half inch strip of the large polka dot paper. And now my base page looks just like it was supposed to, but I saved some of that paper and just use a little bit of extra black cardstock from my stash. By the way, I'm sorry that this is a little bit jiggly. I was at a retreat and someone was using a Cricut, so it was kind of shaking the table a little bit. So I hope you're not getting too dizzy. All right, so for layout two, I did the same thing. I um, put my strips of paper down first and lined them up on my Versamat, but instead of using a background page, I used my Versamat to measure 
how much, how wide the 12 inches was and lined everything up. And then I was able to create my own base page just with those smaller pieces. I hope you're able to follow that. The first mat is really, really awesome for this purpose. And you can even um, kind of temporarily adhere your pieces down where they need to go so they don't shift around. And usually I do that, but I didn't do that here. All right, so I've got everything laid out on my Versamat, and I'm gonna start laying out my photos and all the die cut pieces. So those two blue ruffled strips go across the top, and that really helps to kind of anchor everything because there's a lot going on on this page. I'm gonna use my handy dandy photo trimmer to trim this photo down to three by four from a four by six because I didn't need all that background space. And then that will fit nicely on my layout. I like using three by four photos and in this layout, it really worked out nicely to have the smaller size photos. Now I'm gonna start bringing in some stickers. So my journaling spot is one of the stickers. This play is a sticker and I've got some clouds and the sun and rainbow and I'm just trimming them all off of my sticker sheet. You can see I've used quite a bit of that sticker sheet now already, but we've still got some more to go that I'll use in my future layouts. I'm gonna place down these clouds where they go. Some of them vary in sizes. Got my guide out in front of me so I know where everything goes even though they're being rearranged just a little bit. And then I'm gonna use my Dana Wakely Aqua um, gloss spray to kind of sprinkle some um, splatters everywhere. This is a really cool gloss spray. I love that it dries with a glossy look. You just have to make sure you're real careful as you're tapping it because it does like to kind of go all over the place. But it gives it a really cool look and it does dry pretty quickly. So I'm gonna put that around and then I'm gonna set it aside to dry for a bit and then we're gonna also add some Distress Oxide ink in a bit. I decided that my photos needed a little bit of fo a photo mat to make them pop off the page a little bit. So I cut up some Lagoon cardstock to add behind each photo. And so I cut that at three and a quarter by four and a quarter to go behind my three by four photos. And now I'm adding some Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide ink behind where the clouds are gonna go. This was not called for in the guide, but I thought that my clouds needed to pop off of that background, that white background, just a little bit more. So I did use the foam tool and then later decided I really liked this brush tool. It added on the ink a little bit more evenly and um, lightly so I could add more or less. So um, I thought that gave a cool look behind the clouds. Now I'm adding the play stickers and I kept them on the carrier sheet so that I could kind of hold it up and see how I wanted them to be laid out. So you'll see me keep holding up the whole thing and um, then placing the letters. And notice also, I'm not pushing the stickers down all the way. I'm just kind of tapping them down just to kind of tack them just a little bit before I commit. And that way it's easy to lift up and move around if I need to. And now I got it just right. And now we're on to adhering all of the photos, making sure that I like where all of the placement of my die cuts are before I commit. I ended up moving that cloud down because I wanted to create more of a visual triangle with the clouds. I didn't have anything down in that bottom left. So I added that one cloud down in the bottom left. And I think the rainbow with the sun is going to be plenty up there in that little spot. And then I'm going to put this little cloud on foam tape. I put most of the clouds on foam tape just to give it a little bit of dimension. And I like the little shadow that it creates for the clouds. So I adhered all those die cuts down and then found these little star die cuts and decided to place those around. And then there were lots of these little stickers, little stars and hearts and words. And I'm treating them kind of as small embellishing um, items. So I'm scattering them around the page. I like these two little so loved and adorable stickers that were on the sticker sheet as well. And just kind of placing those around. 
I went through my puffy stickers and added some puffy stickers as well. I realized I really liked the hearts placed on top of the clouds kind of gave that layering look and also it was such a nice contrast. I really like using arrows and thought I wanted that one there, but I thought it competed with the sun too much. So I took that off, found this little puffy sticker arrow to put on, added a few other little details, which really took the place of like sparkles or sequins that I would normally use and that finished it off. Here's a closer look at all of the details. Look at all that gloss on the stickers. It's so fun. I love that. And the Distress Oxide inks behind the clouds really make them pop and those splatters are really fun. I hope you'll join me next Tuesday for the third part of this Killa Kit series where I will put together the final layout that was designed for this kit. But then after that, I have several more layouts to share using my leftovers from the kit. So here's a link to part one in the series. If you missed that, you can go back and watch it as well as one other video I thought you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos and have a wonderful day.